Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. All righty, it's going to be an exciting video tonight. Stay tuned. Be back in a minute. Alrighty, I am back in action. Let's step it back. What do we got here? We got a new addition we're working on. And that is this iron casing. It's got a back welded onto it. And Ed says a magnetic current if you want to make the magnet even stronger, you'll put your coil and core into an iron casing and you'll connect the core to the back of the casing. So what I'm going to do here is drill a hole and then I'm going to drill a hole in this. It's an inch and a half square stock and I'm going to bolt this together inside and I'll Put it like in the center and what I'm going to do is build a aluminum spool that goes in there and I'm going to make a coil that goes in there. Um, this was another experiment. I was experimenting. There's a bunch of ferrite and a coil and I was going to put it in here and I have it fitting pretty good but I don't like it because when you're dealing with magnetism, this is has to be really part of something that's a structure. So it already has a flaw. So I said, well, this is Ed's material, inch and a half square stock. There's a nice casing. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there and put the coil in there. And why are we doing that? Well, let's start off with what Ed says about this is that this core, whatever pole it is, the outside casing will be the opposite pole. So I got to thinking, I said, you know, I'm, I'm still blown away by how this whole <clears throat> um, adventure this time, rebuilding the wheel and the coils and the things that I'm experimenting on. Yes, dear. Can I come back? No, not yet. I'm, I'm filming. Give me a, give me a few minutes and how I'm seeing energy show up and, and how to use it and what to do with it. Um, it's, this is really a, like a whole new ball game. So with this right here, Ed's claiming that these core will be one pole and the outside casing will be another. And, and it's true because if you look at the PMH, when I test the PMH, um, in a way of when the magnet passes here, this side here is the same pole position as this. So this south stretches through the coil and actually comes out to about the middle here. And then this north will be on this side and it stretches out. So really, you're looking at two bar magnets here, but they're connected back here in the neutral. And that's where Ed says there's not a lot going on back there, but there's still... Um, you notice that the back here I have connected to the pipe, which for right now is just sitting on top of the ground, but that's going to be connected to a um, electrostatic. Hey, Adam, electrostatic um, plate, a couple plates, and that's going to be in the ground. So that inductively will be collecting um, 
energy from the ground, uh, whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't really matter at that point, is just moving um, electrons through the ground and, and putting them in the electrostatic plates. So you'll have your plate down bottom. So you notice this is all connected. So So what, what I'm doing here is we're getting ready to put spools on these magnets. Now, Ed in his writing, uh, let me see right over here, he says about his um, best wheel. And when he talks about his best wheel, he's talking about this wheel. So he says his best wheel. He says, um, okay, let me get to the point. All right, here it is. You made magnetic currents in three different ways, but in principle, they all were made exactly the same way. Magnetic currents are made by concentrating, then dividing. The, the dividing part is going to be the copper. Is the, is the copper. So we're going to nail down that the copper is the dividing. And then shifting the existing north to south pole individual magnets from one place to another. So one place to another, we're talking about a time frame of some kind of cycle, okay? Just want to put that out there to you guys. That's how I'm, I'm noting all this. Now I will illustrate how my best machine is doing it. I will use only one coil and one U-shaped permanent magnet without using the windings that my machine uses to increase the permanent mag magnet strength. And he's talking about these magnets, magnet strengths. Hey, Hassan, how you doing? So we'll put that aside for right now. So we're going to put coils on here. And what this is going to become is the inductor. We're going to create a tank circuit in this little triangle right here. There's going to be a tank circuit. And the tank circuit is in between the capacitance, which will be the, the uh, capacitor that's up here, and then it'll be between the inductor down here, which will be the wheel. So how is this going to work, guys? Well, if you know about tank circuits, uh, when one is charging, the other one's uh, is descending down from power. And then when the other one displaces power, this one picks it up. So basically, you'll have a cycle here. So we're going to have to do a sort of a resonant situation here to where the capacitance is going to have to match the inductance. So we're going to do some math here and figure out how much inductance do we need to add. So how much wire, how much iron and how much wire we're going to use here to balance out. So we'll have a balancing and juggling act in between the prong end here and the capacitance. Now what will happen here is to get the wheel perpetual so it turns on its own. I don't want to add any power to this system. Okay? So number one goal, no batteries are included. No batteries. Goal is to get the wheel turning on its own. So when I take it and I turn it, it should start to go on its own. So right now, this wheel is a very heavy wheel. And you can see I just gave it a light little tug. What's going on, Justin, in the house? What's up, man? So you can see that it's reacting to the coils. Now, these coils... No power to them. They are making the power right now. What power are they making them, you're saying? Let's just get a little spinning going here. And you can see the heartbeat. Yesterday I showed you the oscilloscope going on the other video. This one's a visual, guys, for the visual ones out there. So we'll stop the wheel. 
And we'll see this one beat first. This one here, let me explain this, how this is set up. So we got these two. We got these two PMHs in series, okay? So we're coming out of one of uh, coming out of here. We got these two connected together. We're coming out of here and going into the start of that one. Coming out of that one and we're going into the bridge rectifier. For a full wave bridge rectifier, okay? And pretty much that's it. So where this LED sits is the DC out from the full wave bridge rectifier. This LED is sitting straight AC. So just what this is producing out, this is AC in it. So you'll see these are out of phase and you'll see that the DC lasts longer. And then these up here are four and a half watts each. And these are about 24 LEDs. And they're um, coming off of the uh, DC side. So I'm coming off the DC side, firing one up and then the other. So there's, it, you know, it ain't about right now, but it's just about making the system and seeing how much energy I have. So let me turn these lights off and just so we can get a little better view. And let's get the wheel turning. You can see, look, how these two are both flashing. There we go. That's a little better. How they're flashing. What's going on, Dave? All right, see how they're different out of phase? And then up top, you'll see I'll pick up in speed. And then up top, well, the, the ones up top need 12 volts. And they're starting to fire up now. So another thing is, too, is in coils like this, uh, at, you need to get the magnetic field going, the flux. And there seems to be some kind of in, inherent... Um, resonance about itself between the magnets turning and the PMH because it builds up the magnetic flux around there. And then you can see that when that happens, the lights get brighter. It's, it's pretty cool with this electricity, really how it works through. And this is just from, from the wheel turning. I mean, there's nothing turning. So power in, I mean, uh, to get power would be what we put in for power and what we get out and over unity everybody calls it um everybody's been hitting it against the wall for a long time over a hundred years over a hundred years and um funny thing is we're making this power we got uh, nine watts up up top right they just went out the other ones are still on these are three volts each I think they're um, um, one amp. Now you can see the wheel. The wheel's still heavy ass wheel. You can see how it's reacting. I'm pulling the resistance out of it. I think that's the key with over unity is the ba a balance. And then once you get a balance, then you got to add like Tesla's theory is the kid on the swing. And every time that kid comes up towards you, as soon as he starts going down on that swing, you got to know when to bang that son of a bitch or push him. And pretty much from there, you ain't got to get much of a push, but momentum gets going. So the same thing here. It's, you know, with this heavy ass wheel, that's what got me thinking about this building this coil but more so get some lights on here more so it was about this picture so he's got the box sitting right there and he's got this metal bar going across the top holding it down tire wire holding that down so he's obviously got something there that would be similar to having a a I would call that a um a driver so that would be the driver for the wheel so he could probably get it turning and let go and that thing would keep going it's probably what he was getting a patent on that he figured out how to get something running perpetual 
And then these whole uh, PMH is a whole different story because Lens Law, even though I put a load on them, it's, it's, Lens Law doesn't seem to be even showing up. I mean, the Lens Law, the attraction between the metal to metal, magnet to metal, is definitely there. You can see it just now. And when I put coils on here, this is going to be really more interesting because here's your tank circuit. So when this is charging, that'll be getting energy from the capacitor up here, okay? This capacitor will be getting energy from the coil array. Don't even have to be a bunch. We'll have to just go with it and see one, then two, or three, or four. But that power will go into the capacitor, and the capacitor will split and divide. So now from there, we need to move it. We're going to send it and pulse it into the, the, um, the coils on the magnets. That's going to increase the strength of the magnetic field. Therefore, when this magnet south is approaching the coil here, the, revert, the opposite um, pole is going to appear on this side. So you're going to have these attractions going here. This here is going to be flipping its poles with this here as this thing stretches away. And as it stretches and snaps, the poles reverse. So you just have, and here's your cog wheel in a sense of, of energy going here. So we're going to be sending that up, condensing it, separating it, and condensing it. It had two rings on his pipe, and we'll have two different capacitors. So one capacitor is a charging capacitor that's always taken the, the um, electrons, we'll call them, or ions, we'll call them. They're taken, they're, they're, it, it's, it's a pressure belt tank. <clears throat> it's the pressure tank. That pressure tank doesn't re it release its energy in, in a normal sense of a capacitor. The other capacitor behind it, or should I say plate behind it, will be one plate of the capacitor and the other plate will be on that side. So basically what we're doing there is those plates will release. And when it releases, it's a DC pulse into this guy right here. This guy here, the driver, will get, hey, Jason, inside the driver will be getting a magnetic pulse, which will be moving the wheel. You got it. Pressure is essential to power. And power is energy in, energy out. We're, we're straight up dealing with, with this whole thing. And this right here is going to be beautiful because I don't need a lot of energy to turn this wheel. And I don't have a lot of resistance in what the PMHs represent in the power they're getting. Or not the power they're getting, but the, the, uh, the flow of energy that's going through them. And so moving it, I don't need a lot of power. So putting a coil in here and creating a north and south pole, I want to show you this. So... What I like about this is Ed says that the center core, to make it the most efficient, is so that the coils inside are iron casing and the back of the core is, is uh, connected to the bottom of the casing. So that means that one pole would be here, the other pole now is stretched out to the far ends over here. If you put a metal ring around here, this outside casing here becomes the opposite pole. If you want it to be dim and, and void, keep it like this, which is what we're going to do. So the outer field would be here. And I want to show you something here. So when this iron, the magnet is approaching the iron, that iron core right there will be a south pole. Okay? The outer casing point ends here. Let me put this down for a second. The outer ends of the case everywhere around it, but the outer ends, look where they fall in line. So if, this, if the core here of this casing is a south, 
The outer ends are north. Look how you line it. Look how everything's lining up here. Talk about efficiency between electromagnetic inside the casing for the coil and outside for electromagnetic. So, and then when the pole, when the wheel keeps turning, so the core now changes to a north pole and the outside changes to a south. So that is almost perfect for, for pulling purposes. It's like when it's pulsed DC from the capacitor, from the releasing capacitor, from the releasing capacitor. Remember, the, the main capacitor is always charging. The wheel's going by it. It's always charging. It's always this energy you see that I'm wasting down here. There you go. It's always charging. We're building pressure. There's your pressure build. You're right here you go, guys. Look, watch this. Let me turn the lights down because it's just so bright. And then watch these. These are four and a half watts each. They take 12 volts. So look, now they're on. The pressure built in the system that I have going here because I'm increasing the speed. So I'm building up the pressure, but I'm, you know, I got it going. There's your pressure. So I'm showing you how it's going to work. And I'm trying to make sense of it to you guys. So um, it, it does make a lot of sense. And you see here, look, this son of a bitch is so heavy. I didn't even get the cement on it yet. Wait till I put the cement on this wheel. I, I want to straighten it out to where my uh, variances are perfect. You can see it's still wobbly, but I've been doing a lot of experiments with it. I haven't put an outside magnet to it because I don't want to screw up. The magnets here, they're, they're like perfect. They have great strength about them. Um, they're, they're doing really, really, really good. I'm, I'm really impressed. Look, you can see, look, it's still rolling. This is a DC pulse, and that's an AC pulse. This DC pulse is what would be going into this guy, straight out of, well... We still have more stuff to add. It, we're, we're adding a, a voltage multiplier. So we're, we're going to be multiplying the voltage to step up the voltage to what we need. Remember, more voltage, more, more current. So to step it up in the whole system, because this will be how it becomes, um, I, I'm going to stay... Uh, below the zero. If zero is over, is is the is the fine line between over unity and and consumption, I'm gonna say that when this makes power, this needs to be turning first. So power in would be it turning. So it needs energy for it to turn. For right now, that's me. But I'm. My goal for right now is to get it at least, if I can get it and still get efficient step by step, which I see I'm doing, for every little thing I do, the wheel turns smoother and longer. So that means I'm making it more efficient. I'm not losing much of anything, whether it's resistance in the barren. Well, more pressure and less resistance, but hold on here. That, that's, a good, that's a good comment there. You know what I've learned is that on these electric heaters, when you turn the electric heater on, the little blower, little electric heater, um, the wire in there is the resistance wire. And it doesn't, the resistance wire being used in that situation to where the wire becomes the heater. And until the wattage builds up the pressure, the voltage in that wire goes up, it doesn't, it, it loses its resistance, let's just say, at the very end. When it's, heat, when it's heated up and running, it lost its resistance. And then when that energy stopped, the resistance is back in the wire. So the same thing, what you put in for resistance is matching. You, you can lose it as well based on knowing what you're trying to do with your circuit. So with this being efficient and this being a good electromagnetic mover, 
I believe that I could efficiently get power in here, get the wheel turning. While the wheel's turning, we can add more coils. Ed says in his magnetic current that his best machine is using a combination between field magnets and coils. And he's referencing uh, a field magnet as a coil or permanent magnet that is wrapped in coil that can make the permanent magnet even stronger. So that makes the wheel itself, that makes the wheel itself the, um, that, that part. And then that makes these the coils on the outside. So I think it's sort of transversing the whole lens law uh, effect here. It's, it's sort of different. It's different. I'm, I'm, I'm all static about it. Hope you guys enjoy. Um, was, was there anything else I needed to cover? Oh, uh, we talked about that. We talked about this. Um, man, just, just getting that wheel tuned in and, and, uh, what we even talk about inside. We just, right now we're just on the outside. Hope you guys enjoy. Peace out. Let me turn the lights off. Let's get Ed's wheel lit up from its own power. As soon as it gets to 12 volts or less, the top lights will go out. They're out now. And then these are DC pulse, AC pulse. Wheel turning just freely. And when it turns, it flips the poles in these coils and creates that back EMF, which creates the electromagnetic field, which is very important. Another thing we'll talk about on my next video is why we're just using the positive and we're discarding the negative. All right, guys, peace out. Leave your comments.